Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 77. Today I'm going to be doing some general maintenance on my air gap uh, flash. So this is a very high speed flash, much faster than the standard uh, photography flashes most people are using. And uh, remember this is a high voltage device so this sort of thing should only be done by someone who understands how to safely work with uh, high voltage devices and uh, before people start asking I'm still working on the details of how I can actually sell these devices uh, so uh, you can contact me via the support link on the bottom and I'll, I'll add you to an email that I send out uh, if and when I'm ever able to actually sell this device but in the meantime I'm just gonna keep making videos about them and uh, if people make their own um, they'll have an idea of how to perform maintenance on it. So here are the tools I'll be using today. I've got a small regular screwdriver, a medium Phillips screwdriver, a larger Phillips screwdriver, tape measure, sharpie marker, scissors. This is a standard 13 by 100 millimeter test tube. Uh, and there's a ton of places on the web you can get these. You could actually clean the one that's in there as long as it's not broken. Uh, but I often find I just replace them because they're <clears throat> so inexpensive. Uh, anyways, uh, that's some black electrical tape. And this is the discharge uh, stick that comes with the um, air gap flash that is necessary to, to be safe. And uh, yeah, just don't forget about the uh, safety warning that's on the back here. Mm. So the main thing we're going to cover today is actually just replacing the inner glass tube of the air gap flash. So um, this one is relatively new and doesn't need to be replaced, but it's not assembled very well. It, normally I want uh, the electrode on this left hand side to be in the front and this one's kind of on the bottom. So I'm going to uh, fix that up. But uh, normally after a few thousand flashes, um, some glass powder starts to form uh, on the surface of the tube and it becomes foggy and uh, when that happens eventually uh, the flashing becomes uh, unpredictable and you'll get some extra flashes that you didn't actually trigger so when that starts to happen is when you know that uh, the device needs to be uh, maintenanced and you can either do this yourself or find someone who's uh, capable of working safely with the high voltage. So the first thing we're going to do is remove eight of the screws holding this metal case together. Um, there's one, two, three, four, and then there's four more on the other side. So I'll get those. So now at this point, I need to be very careful. Uh, normally, this large capacitor here um, discharges after about an hour or two of not being uh, plugged in. However, I always treat it as uh, charged until I'm absolutely sure, certain it's not. So you've got to touch the two electrodes on each side. Let's see if we can get a better picture of this. So basically I've, I've got the, the metal um, portions of the discharge stick touching the, the metal electrodes and nothing's happened. If it was charged, there would be a loud uh, spark occurring basically. But uh, this is safe to use because it hasn't been plugged in. If there was a large, uh, a loud discharge, uh, a large discharge from the capacitor, then I would typically um, want to wait a while because uh, it'll actually discharge uh, smaller amounts over time. And while those voltages wouldn't be really dangerous, they could still hurt. So I wouldn't want. Um, to basically be working with this. Again, this is all just knowledge that I'm expecting people to know who'd be doing this sort of thing because they'd be comfortable and safe working with high voltages. 
So now at this point, we're actually going to replace the inner glass tube. Um, the first thing you might think of doing is removing the shield, but there's another shield underneath that and you can't really access the glass tube from the front. So actually, uh, the way you get to it is from the side here, there's three nylon screws holding this acrylic uh, plate on. So you need to remove those three nylon screws. And sometimes this nut is a little too close to get in there. Um, so I oftentimes will just mostly remove this metal screw just to give myself easier access. It's a little tight. But I don't have to take it all the way off. If I just take it most of the way off, then I can get to this nylon screw pretty easily. Then at this point, you can kind of wiggle. It's a little easier if you take off this shield um, on the, the large capacitor, but you can do it with it on, so I usually just leave it on. Um, if you do cut that off, you need to get some replacement nylon ties. Kind of just wiggle it until it gets out. And the other nylon screws back here, I'll grab him. Okay, so at this point, um, this portion is released, and the next step is to go over to this side. So this cable is not long enough to actually pull through, so I actually have to remove this. And uh, this is the negative terminal of the capacitor. So that's why this side doesn't have any shielding on it. And this go this side goes directly to ground, this ground terminal. So then I pull that terminal out. And now this can slide through uh, more freely to gain access. So we're gonna go back to the other side. And uh, basically now you can sort of pull out the whole thing and get access to it. It's a little, little snug, but um, the only other option is to actually uh, sort of remove uh, this terminal over here on this side. Um, but you don't need to, so I just kind of keep it all here. And as long as this capacitor, you know it's discharged um, and it's not plugged in, then you can can get access to this glass tube in, in this manner. And uh, basically, we're going to take that off now and put a new one on. And now, take him off and we replace him with a new one. So now what I do with this new glass tube is I put some marks on it so I know where to put the electrodes on both sides. So generally I go in one and a quarter from the rounded end and put a little mark. And then I go one and a quarter inch from there so that would be at the two and a half inch mark. And I put a mark there. So I want these electrodes to be about one and a half inches or one and a quarter inches apart. So we've got those marks and we can go about putting in the new <clears throat> glass tube. So I need two strips of black electrical tape and uh, the tape that I have is a little bit too wide so I take a strip that and that's going to be too long get rid of him. Okay, so then I will cut it in half. I've got the two pieces that I need now. And 
and uh, the, the round electrode will go over the tube like this and keep him into place. The uh, red wire on this guy will be in the back um, of the flash. So you want to make sure you get that set in the right direction. And then <clears throat> this, then I usually put this uh, inner uh, wire into the tube and Generally, I want the copper wire on this one facing forward. And then the last thing to do is uh, this little hook-shaped wire is the other electrode. So the inner wire uh, provides a pulse that um, allows the spark to travel across the glass. And the, these two this circle electrode and this electrode are what actually caused the big spark. And uh, they should be about an inch and a quarter apart, like I said. And uh, you generally want this one to be in the front. So, got that situated pretty well. And I'll, it's kind of hard to do this on the camera, but it's a little easier without the camera. So, don't be intimidated by all my weird contortions that I'm doing. get this in place okay so then the other thing that's important is that uh, this one has to be touching the glass this electrode so uh, generally I'll kind of lift it off a little bit and just bend it down and then at that point it should be touching the glass and again you want this one in the front this red wire will be in the front and this red wire is in the back back front okay so now um, with the inner uh, white wire that provides the, the pulse so that the big spark can travel on the outside in. We've got all three wires attached to the glass probe and it's time to put it back into the system. And then you put the nylon screws back in. You just want these just snug. They are nylon, so you don't want to strip them. And remember, I did loosen this metal bolt so I could gain access, so I'm going to tighten him back. And then over on this side, I have to put this guy back. Make sure this one's tight. It would be very bad if he came undone. So he's a lock washer and all of these guys should be. It's good to have them underneath this strap to just as an extra precaution. And at that point, we're pretty good. We can take a look and uh, we're set. So then the only thing left to do is to put the case back on.
So at this point, it's assembled again, has a new flash tube, and we should be ready to test. So we'll just plug it in, turn it on, and uh, this is what connects to the camera axe, but uh, this button here is a good way to test it. So I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but it's definitely flashing. There's when I push it. So hopefully this helped understand a little bit more about the air gap flash. Thanks for watching.